Salam, y'all. I am excited for today. I don't want to waste any time. I'm going to drink a little bit of my tea first. Bismillah. But we have a crazy, rabid Islamophobe that I will be reviewing his video that he did, and I will be refuting him and exposing him for the charlatan, the chameleon that he is. Roll that intro. Hey, what's up, y'all? So we over here. We at um a Muslim mosque in Apopka, in the city where our church is at. A Muslim mosque. What other kind of mosques are there? So we go in there. I want you guys to see how dedicated Muslims are. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. Look how many cars they got in the parking lot. Packed. By the grace of God, I've, I've learned um, apologetics when it comes, comes to Islam. Islam is a false religion. Muhammad was a false prophet. It, the, the Islam talks about <laughs> wars, false prophecies, <laughs> all that. I'm going to go in there, I'm going to interview somebody led by the Spirit, and we'll see what happens. What the heck is going on? So first, he kind of reels you in thinking that, oh, look, I'm going to praise the Muslims. They're here. They're a dedicated group of people. And then immediately goes into Pauline chameleon mode. And he is letting it out, showing you his real colors. So those of you who don't know about who Paul is, <laughs> wow, you're in for a treat. Paul is a self-confessed liar. He was someone who allegedly was a rabbi before converting through a blinding flash vision that led him to Christianity. The problem is, is that the story that he recounts in several different places in the New Testament don't match up. And further, like I mentioned, he is a self-proclaimed liar. And I'll show you on screen. So right here, we have the words of Paul, right? And this is in uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 20. No, 23, actually. 22 to 23. He says, Though I am free of obligation to anyone, I make myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I become like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I become like one under the law. Though I myself, I'm not under the law to win those under the law. To those without the law, I become like one without the law. Though I'm not outside the law of God, but I'm under the law of Christ. Even, he can't even make his mind up what, what he's under. <laughs> to win those without the law. To the weak, I become weak. To win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means, I might save some. And I do this all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. And for those of you who say, oh, that's not really what he meant. You don't have the spirit, so you don't understand. Well, actually, Clement of Alexandria, one of your church fathers, said that lying is not a good thing in Christianity except for evangelism. <gasps> so if, you're, if you're gonna, your life is on the line and you're about to be killed, he said, don't lie. But he said when it comes to spreading the gospel, it's okay to lie because you're going to end up getting people to share in the blessings of the gospel. So remember that, guys. It's okay to deceive people as long as we can make them believe in the Trinity because it's already really hard to understand. Let's go back to it. Hey guys, so we're here on the property. I'm waiting for the, for the Imam. He's gonna come out here and talk to me. That's the leader of the um, Muslim group. So we're gonna see, just talk to him. How you doing, man? They tried to get me confused with the Imam. I'm not. <laughs> 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 talk to this man right here. He's he the whole show. <laughs> so we're just doing like interviews to spread positivity uh -huh. and like. Bro, you just said this is the devil religion spreading <laughs> incest, all the kind of whatever the heck you were saying, and then you chameleon it up, put that suit on, that, sh that sheep clothing on, Mr. Wolf, and now you're here saying, oh, we're here to spread positivity. We want love between people. Bro, I am very disappointed. This is, this is very despicable, to say the least. Get back to it. 
like just light on different spiritualities and practices and stuff like that. Right, right. So I just like uh, we're just we play like a non-biased, just right, right, kind of right. like mutual. Right, right, right. Would you be down to do an interview? Um, when right now? Right now, bro. I got stuff I gotta do, man. <laughs> Why? Yeah, yeah. I gotta give me some information. Let me know y'all coming, man. I'm sorry, bro. Uh, I, I, I could do an interview with him if that's cool. Yeah, yeah, let him, that's the man right there. Let him do it. Let him do it. Is, I'm, is I'm he knowledgeable? Sure. Is he well knowledgeable? Wait, he, he well, he's well spoken, man. He got now. He know. Don't let him. Don't let. Don't hide behind. Don't let him hide behind a smile. He, An imam is the minister in Christianity, in comparison to Christianity. Okay. Most of them are what we call students of knowledge. They would go to Saudi or somewhere in the Middle East and learn the language okay. and the, the important portions of the religion. Okay. Um, so most of them are... Oh, so he's been overseas. Uh, for probably eight years, six oh, to eight years. Saudi Arabia for eight years. Yeah, for schooling. Wow. Most of the imams go to school for four, no less than four years. Most of them six to eight years. Wow. So, um, they're all fluent in Arabic. They can read and write the language, um, and the benefit is to, for us that are reverts to Islam. They understand the Islamic side of things in American light. Wow. Okay. So it's a big difference. So when you're over there and over here, over there, it's a, it's a it big kind of like a, you have to adapt. Kind of. Yeah, you have to adapt over there because their culture and everything is different than ours here. Okay. So we like to ask like just questions about the religion. So according to the Quran, is it true that because I've, I've studied this that uh, that Jesus was born of a virgin? Yes, he was born of a virgin, but he is not God. So he was, but he was born of a virgin. So that, so how was he born then? Of a mother. Allah Subhanahu Taala said, "Be," just like He said, "Be" to us to be here, mm -hmm. and it was. So, like, if, if Jesus is the only one that was born of a virgin, was it, was Muhammad born of a virgin? Nope, he had parents. Wow. Okay. He went this is a false equivalency, and it does not necessitate divinity. Nice try, but uh, try again. To, and he was a person like you and I. Wow, he so was not one who walked on water. There was no miracles per se that he did other than he received the message. So, so all right, so first of all, I, I want to bring this up. This is uh, empirically 100% absolutely false. We have over 100 authenticated narrated hadith of miracles that the prophet peace and blessings be upon him did and one of them is even in the Quran when shaqq al-qamar right the moon had split by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala water gushed from his fingertips he healed people's blind eyes just like Isa bi-idhnillah by the permission and will of Allah the prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him was given several miracles that are special to him that he mentioned in a hadith that no other prophet had ever been given before him. He was given authentically narrated to us miracles that are so outstanding and amazing that no other prophet pales in comparison to the prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. And then he was given the Quran, which is the greatest miracle of all. So brothers and sisters who say this, the prophet wasn't given any miracles. Who are Muslims saying this, guys, you, you got to fix your stuff. This is completely 100% inaccurate and if you're someone who's at a masjid and you've got people who are speaking on behalf of Islam You got to do something about this. You can't just let the awam the regular average everyday guys come and start speaking about stuff Answering hard questions to these charlatans these deceivers who are gonna try and trick them up because that's what they're doing They want to interview Uneducated right people who don't have that much knowledge. I'm not gonna say he's unintelligent. He's our brother mashallah But he doesn't have the requisite knowledge to be able to answer this so this is an amana. Do not just let somebody answer any questions to any Tom, Dick, and Abdullah that comes up to you trying to, you know, I want to learn and spread the love and peace. Because I guarantee you they don't, right? Especially if they're coming with a mic and a camera set. Yeah, Allah. Jesus, did he perform miracles in the Quran? Yes. Yep. What miracles did he perform? Um, I can't verbatim say that he healed people. Wow. He did heal people. Like the um, blind and he raised yep. the dead and all that. And the, the only difference in what we believe Jesus and, and Christianity is, is that he's not God. We don't believe in the Trinity. Of course. Otherwise, he was a prophet. He came with a message. Wait, he's the only prophet that did miracles like that, right? Yeah. Out of all the prophets. He is. And this is what got me. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> what the heck? Other prophets healed the dead. By the permission of God. In the Bible, Elias. Elijah, Elisha healed the dead. 
not just Jesus, Isa, alayhi salam, peace be upon him. Like, even in your own Bible, this guy is a true snake through and through, man. And according to our tradition, yes, Jesus was not the only one who had special miracles. I mean, how are you forgetting, sir, that Moses split the sea by the will of God? Yusha, Joshua, made the sun stand in the middle of the sky for hours so that they could win the battle so the sun didn't set by the permission of God. There are so many miracles by other prophets other than Jesus. Like, this is really cringe. Because like, I, I studied the Christian side and the Islam and the Buddhist, because the Buddhists, they say it's a Christ conscious. Mm -hmm. To me, I, like, I, I think it's interesting. They believe in the Christ conscious and more like you are God. This guy is just making up stuff as he goes along. I've studied Buddhism. There's no such thing as the Christ consciousness in Buddhism. I mean, this is a joke. This guy is a true joker. Like they told me, like, you are God. And I'm like, right. what the heck? Yeah, Christians, yeah. they say Jesus is God. But like what I was thinking, just based off of the Bible, the Quran, right? Um, did Jesus ascend to heaven? Like, because I read that Islam in Islam, they believe Jesus ascended to heaven in the flesh, in his body. Mm -hmm. The soul, went to, the, the body stays here. The body never leaves. What, who, where is this? I got to find out what this much is. This ain't no Ahlul Sunnah Wal Jama'ah. This is not no Sunni Aqidah. Jesus went up fully soul and fully body. 100%. Like there's no doubt about it. Allah says in the Quran that we will raise you to us to protect you. So on and so forth. Right? This is, this is by consensus, which is called ijma. There's no doubt about it. Nobody except for a small group of heretics have said that Jesus went up only in soul. Also, this guy, I know what the Christian's trying to do. He's trying to say that, oh, he's, he wants to make this, Jesus is the only one, only one who did miracles. The only one that went to heaven. Dude, bro, Idris, or as you say, Enoch, he was raised up to the heavens. That's where he went. He did that thousands of years before Jesus. Jesus is not special in the sense that he is different than other prophets. All of the prophets, Right? We don't differentiate between any of them. All of them are beloved to God. All of them did miracles. All of them had revelation and this connection with God. Try again, man. But, uh, the soul, but I, I all of that, our souls that, that his, will actually go to heaven. But, but Jesus actually went to heaven. He ascended and he's coming back to he, fight he the... He ascended to heaven? Yeah. And, and, the, and, and the he crime. will return. In the flesh. He yeah. will return in the flesh. We don't know what the flesh really looks like. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, like his like fleshly body, but he's like in a like a glorified body or something like that. Well, I know the, we don't have details of the body itself, but we mm -hmm. I can explain to you that in every. God, don't, don't stop, guys, stop! I don't know how many dawah tables I've been at, how many times I've been on Clubhouse, where someone just has this this fire. It's not enough to have fire, brothers and sisters. Wallahi, I swear to Allah, it's not enough. To have fire for the deen and then just talk about it. The Prophet ﷺ did say, بَلِّغُ anni walo ayah." Absolutely. But if it's just one ayah. Say one ayah. Don't keep talking into other things that you literally have no idea what you're talking about. Because this brother right here, he's almost some brother. He looks like a complete and utter ignoramus. And I don't mean to be mean. But this is completely nonsensical. And it is humiliating for a Muslim to be representing Islam with this kind of this kind of words i'm very sorry the book if there's a description of a person who described them mm. you know how can someone have written to the t the pictures that we see in the, in the pictures of the bibles now wow there was nobody you know there was no authors you know michelangelo wasn't alive back then wow. we didn't get direct messages from anyone back then to say what any of these guys look like and do you ever like so christians say that they have a relationship with god i to the like from whatever that means, do you do you have a relationship with Allah? I do. Like they said, when they we pray. <laughs> we're in in prostration. We're our communication is strictly to to God. We don't worship Muhammad. Okay. And then so do you any guys prayers? Hear his voice? No. Because like I heard the Christians can hear the voice of the um of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Bro, you better best be stepping back now. This is a bunch of nonsense. I was a Christian who allegedly had the Holy Spirit, but guess what the Holy Spirit did to me? He guided me to Islam. Man, people who talk about hearing voices, I don't doubt that they hear voices. But those voices are not angelic voices. Those voices are not holy voices. Because we know that the jinn have access to us at certain points in time. And the people who are the most filthy, the people who have the dirtiest hearts, 
they're going to be a lot easier access to these shayateen, which are the devils, right? People say, well, this person, we did the healing of hands, and this person was better. Yeah, the shayateen are liars. They're, they're good tricksters. They'll go and hide for a little bit. person looks like they're healed. Look, that exorcism worked so that they can get you to do shirk, which is associating partners with the one true God, thinking that Jesus somehow is some, you know, divine entity. And then when it's time for you to die, khalas, you go to hell forever because you worshipped alongside God a partner. You worshipped a man who used the bathroom. You worship a man who died, the dying God. This is an ancient, like Mithraic myth, even earlier than Mithraism. It goes back even past the ancient Sumerians. This dying God idea that God dies, resurrects, this is ancient mythology 101. It has nothing to do with what God taught to his prophets ever or what he taught to Jesus. Peace and blessings be upon him, the son of Mary. I'm very disappointed in these guys. We don't believe that. And, and then they, 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 from what I've seen in the churches, they see demons casted out of I've people. Seen it too. I went to a church called the Church in the Round. The church is called the Church in the Round because they see the devil couldn't hide in corners. I've been in churches when they get the Holy Spirit, you name it. Cast been there, done it. Oh, the whole night. I've seen miracles, yeah. like people getting healed and all that. I've never seen anybody get healed, per se, but I've seen people fall out. I've seen you know. people, like I saw one time in this church, a lady got, like, literally got up out of a wheelchair, and I was like, what the heck? Now, it, so, it, do you think that stuff is real? I'm not going to cast judgment because I've seen. So I'll give you a little bit of a background. My uncle, I won't say his name just to protect his identity. His daughter, so my cousin, she was born with cerebral palsy. Okay. And whenever they were younger, he used to go to Jews for Jesus type of thing. And then later on, they wanted to try out some, you know, more evangelical Christian churches. So they went to these major healers that have the television, people coming out of their crutches, all this stuff. And I know this firsthand, brothers and sisters. So I tell you, when I say this, I swear to God on this. May Allah punish me if I'm a liar. I swear to God. Wallahi. So he goes to these churches, to these mega ministers, to go get my cousin healed. They go up and try multiple occasions every single time. They tell them, we're not going to do this. We can't do this. No, y'all go away. It's a fake it's all a show. The people who are in wheelchairs getting up, they ain't sick. They ain't crippled, man. This is a big dog and pony show. And every single one of you Christian who's out there, I feel worse for you because you have bought into this nonsense. And that you, you who are sincere and you have that sensitive heart because you want to see miracles happen in front of you. I get it. But you've bought into this baloney because we believe miracles happen. But not like this, not through shirk, not through people worshiping other gods. This is all meant to take your money, pull the wool over your eyes. And the Pied Piper is going to come calling. The Merchant of Venice is going to come calling for his pound of flesh on the Day of Judgment. You think that it's innocent. You think that it's okay. Live and let live. Let's believe Jesus died for our sins. No. The fire is real. It is a real thing. And you will be punished if you die believing that Jesus is God, believing that God has partners in association or that he is one of three, even if it's not one entity or three persons, kidda kidda, like this. You will be accountable for giving any type of divinity to anything in creation that belongs to the Lord of the majestic throne. And they were all better. Were they sick before, before they fall down, down and get up? No. It's not... It, from an Islamic perspective, it's not our just to judge even those who we don't believe as they believe. So if it, it happened, that's respectable. Yeah, I've got to say that it happened. The, the, it's not mine to argue that point. This is a random question. Only you would know. If he was crippled today, yeah. went to church and got healed, only him and God would know what was real. That's true. And anyone else that really had like the doctor's report or whatever, because this lady had like a doctor's report. She couldn't like it was it was real. That that moment is between you and God. That is the biggest reason why I took this faith. It's because on the day of judgment, my good deeds are all that counts for me. So your works. Yeah, what I've done good in this world. Good works. Yep, good works and my bad. That scales. I need to have heavy on the good side because no one gets to say, but brother Kamal was a great guy. Doesn't matter. So in Christianity, it's grace. It's, 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 they, they believe. be saved. From what I, when I, when I studied, they believe the blood of Jesus is an atonement for all the sins. Right. The innocent is taken to account for the guilty real just now
We don't believe that in Islam. And because we don't believe that from an Islamic perspective for what mm -hmm. we read in the Bible. Because they believe that blood equals life and sin equals death or whatever, and that no. it, 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 it catches out. We're all going to read. Yeah, in, in pagan cultures where you have all of these blood ritual, blood sacrifice, blood drinking ceremonies, which, by the way, drinking blood and eating flesh and skin has nothing to do with Judaism and that which Moses, Musa, peace and blessings be upon him, came with. By the way, guys, this is a pagan ritualistic cannibalism and this has come from paganism it has has nothing to do with judaism whatsoever i just want to throw that out there we're all going to reach the grave mm -hmm. and we're all going to be accountable for our sins I, i've never believed i'm not sure if, what kind of churches you guys have went to but i've been to churches where non-denominational mainly the pastor says is golden I was raised that way to believe that. But the pastor says what? It's golden. What he says is right. Oh, like only him. Only him. So my question was to him, after I really realized it, it was a business. The biggest turnoff for me was that in the 80s, I moved from my little hometown to a big city, and billboards are up, churches are huge, and there's no connection. Only connection. No family. No, there's no family. So when Mary got no sick. No community. No community. When Mary got sick, who'd they call? They called the pastor. Who'd the pastor say? Uh, Deacon so-and-so will get back to you. But she's been paying her, her tithes for decades. Mm -hmm. Where'd that money go? Where'd that help go? Wow. That's a problem. And it still is today. I'm do you, sure do you think I all the churches you, are like that? I'd hope not. I know the mega ones are. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can see the mega ones that have helicopters and planes, million dollars. It gets crazy, yeah. You know, there's, you're just a number in a church. Were you in the Army? Army Reserve, yep. And then did you hurt your back in the military? No, I never had any issues. Mm -hmm. Do you have any pain in your body right now? Mm -hmm. No. Do you, do you believe Allah could heal you if you had pain? Yes. Have you seen? I, have you guys seen it happen before? Not physically saying I can say somebody's healed, but I had multiple uh, health issues, and I think my faith. I'm sure my faith and my mindset has allowed me to be where I'm at today. So, the wages of sin, of sin from. I want to stop real quick and kind of put in on this because I want to give my own personal experience. Which, hey, Christians, you don't have to believe it. Because it's just my word. Just like we don't have to believe when you say that you see these healing moments. Because at the end of the day, from what I've seen, it's all fake. But I will promise you, and again, I swear to God, uh, on my life, on my soul, that before I became a Muslim, anyone who knew me, <laughs> I was an alcoholic. Uh, and a lot of people say, don't say this. You're going to harm the youth. You're going to you know, have them thinking that it's okay to do these things. No, I'm, I'm not trying to do that. But it's important that you understand kind of where I came from. I also used to smoke a bunch of pot, and it was something that really took over my life to the point where my parents were like, we don't even want you to really come around anymore, Brandon, when you drink, because you're just not a good guy to be around. And so the day that I prostrated, put my head on the ground like Jesus did, right, before he went to be allegedly taken to the cross, we said, Father, take this cup from me. When I did that, that day, completely my alcoholism was gone i was in aa i even started my own AA group i could not quit drinking i could not quit smoking pot i could not quit smoking cigarettes dipping a can of snuff every day two packs of cigarettes a day all at once just like that everything was taken from me without any effort on my part just that i took that step into saying god your will be done not mine i'm not going to worship jesus I'm not going to worship a stone, a cross, Mary, any saint, the book, anything. I am going to worship you, my creator, alone. And I'm going to give up everything for you, no matter what it takes. No matter how many people leave me, I lost all of my friends. Everybody. Most of my family I have still not seen since I have converted. Because they are afraid that the FBI was going to come after them because Brandon is now some scary boogeyman. I lost so much, but I don't regret any of it because I have true peace that Christianity and no other religion can ever give you, and that I swear by. And those of you who are truly, sincerely seeking the truth, you can take my word for it, but don't because I want you to go find it for yourself, to read the Quran for yourself, to see this and see the evidences that Islam proves for its own veracity, that the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, is impossible that he was deluded, was a liar or was possessed. And the only option that remains is that he was truthful.
if, so they were constantly doing works, works to atone for their sins in the, in the tabernacles and temples. And none of it could work, it could never amount because they kept doing it and they kept waiting for the Messiah, the Christ to come that was prophesied for thousands of years. So God sent, God, God can't enter the physical realm without being in a vessel, a body. Even demons, jinns can't be in a vessel without, without having a body. They can't be in the physical realm without entering a, a body. You're comparing the creator of the heavens and the earth who is uncreated to jinn who he himself created bad bad analogy false equivalency so god said i'm gonna come into a vessel right he came and born of a virgin the god who cannot be bound by space and time is bound by space and time it's like the person who's like you know what i'm a vegan but i'm gonna eat a hamburger but i'm still gonna call myself a vegan i'm still vegan you can't tell me i'm not or like lgtv i i say that i'm this but i'm, I'm they're really not they, but they say they are this is Christianity or the people who are allowing LGTV to propagate itself because they have that same backwards understanding of what logic and reasoning is that it allows for people to just say, well, something that can't be can be. Two opposite and distinct definitions of things can exist at the same time. It's complete and utter nonsense. He came into a body and then he was perfect and sinless, the, the, what you guys believe is the prophet. He casted out devils, healed the sick, which is also in the Quran. It has nothing to do with being God. Irrelevant. He did miracles that no other prophet did. And when he did this... And other prophets did miracles that he never did. He proved that he was God and he preached the kingdom. Did not prove that he was God, nor did he ever claim to be God. The kingdom of God is at hand. He said, me and, me, and the, me and the Father are one in the book of John. But he approved... That. As Allah says in the Quran, Allah wa Rasul. Obey Allah and the Messenger. Why? Because they're one in purpose. Not in essence, an, a created thing versus an uncreated thing. Does the, the baker become the cake when he bakes the cake? Dude, <laughs> you got to fix this up here. That mm. Nowhere. So let's, let's, let's go back a few things. Mm -hmm. Who wrote the books of the Bible? The Holy Spirit. Is, just, like, just like the Quran was taken from the Christian Bible. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. Okay. That's why the Quran completely differs from the Bible in so many places. For example, the Bible says that the leader of Egypt at the time of Joseph, Yusuf alayhi salam, was a Pharaoh, when the Quran says that it was an Aziz, which coincidentally happens to concur and agree with history once we found the Rosetta Stone that, oh, wait, the Pharaoh dynasty did not exist until right before the time of Moses. There was no such thing as a Pharaoh during the time of Joseph. This is what we call an anachronism, something that was written well later, not understanding the past and putting a title or something that they thought existed in the past, but actually didn't. That's one of the reasons why we know beyond the shadow of a doubt that the Bible is not the word of God. I know that for a fact. No. I do. I studied prove the Quran. Me, you cannot prove to me. I can't. You cannot show me anywhere I can't. where we took the Bible mm -hmm. and created the Quran. So you're saying that he just, that Muhammad just knew the Bible. No. Like, he, took he never quotes from the Bible. From the Old Testament. No, 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 he did not. The Catholic. The, no. Allah SWT, God, gave the message directly to, to Muhammad. I don't know. That's nowhere, nowhere, what I've studied. nowhere can you find in a, in a, in a Quran mm -hmm. that he took anything from the Old Testament or New Testament. Mm -hmm. But I will say this, just based off the Quran, like what I was studying, they believe you guys believe that Jesus Christ ascended to heaven and the flesh is coming back to fight his soul ascended, not in the flesh. None of our when, our, when we're putting the ground six feet under, we're in the ground. I, I, our I, souls the same. From what I studied in the Quran, it was the flesh. But I don't know. I, I got, I'll study it again, and that he's the one that's coming back to fight the end. He will come back. He will come back. But Muhammad won't. And Muhammad prophesied many things that didn't come to pass. Muhammad did a lot of things that were. Uh, Muhammad prophesied many things that didn't come to pass. Okay. So there's a thing that's a, there's a difference between a false prophecy and a prophecy that has not been realized yet. So let's take an example. I want you, I'm going to challenge you, show me a prophecy that should have happened but didn't. I'll be waiting on that. However, we have so many prophecies, most of actually the prophecies of the Prophet Muhammad have come true. So I want to show you on screen right now, uh, we have the hadith of the angel Gabriel. Okay, it's very well known. 
amongst Muslims, right? And it was uh, narrated on the authority of Umar ibn al-Khattab, where he reported that we were sitting with the Messenger of Allah. This is the day that Jibril came to him, and without really taking up too much of your time, uh, he, he explains what is Islam, right? The five pillars, what is Iman, the six pillars of faith. And then he says, what are the signs of the day of judgment? And so the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, the asker knows just as much as the one being asked. And so uh, he says, what are its signs? Like when is the day of judgment? He said, I don't know. What are the signs? He said, the slave girl will give birth to her mistress, right? Which is, some of the scholars have said that this is when you start seeing the children rebelling against their parents, or there will become a time where the slave people, their children will become their own masters, right? So we have seen that today in the way that children treat their parents. We've also seen this in the past where people who gave birth, they gave birth to those who ruled over them. Then the next part is something really ajib. This is one of the great prophecies of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, where he says, you will see barefoot, naked Bedouins, shepherds, dependent shepherds compete, compete. And this is interesting in the construction of tall buildings, something that was unheard of before in Arab culture. Right? This is just not something that existed. Right? Not only will they do it, but they'll compete in it. And where in the world today do we see the competition for really tall buildings? It's here. That prophecy is coming true, exactly as the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, prophesied. And Omar asked, who is this? He said, very least, it was Gabriel, who came to teach you your religion. Now, if you want to talk about false prophecies, I'll show you a false prophecy. Right now, we have in front of us Mark 13. And I don't want to read through the whole thing because you've probably read it before. But if we start from the beginning, we see that Jesus is about to start talking about things that are going to happen, right? And we want to find out, okay, when is this supposed to happen? So he's talking to his disciples right here, Peter, James, John, and Andrew. Tell us these things. What will be the signs when all these things will be fulfilled? Okay. He said, come in my name. I am he. Deceive many. So on and so forth. No, brother will betray brother to death. Father his child. So on and so forth. He keeps going. And then the, the prophecies are getting even crazier. Right? Okay. We can say those probably happen. There will be tribulation. Not, not seen since the beginning of the creation until this time. So on and so forth. Right? Uh-oh. Here we go. But in those days, here we go. The sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. Oh, wow. The stars of heaven will fall and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And they will see the Son of Man, here's the main one, coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds and the farthest part of the, earth, so the, farthest part of the heaven. When does this happen? Oh, dear prophet. He says, that so also when you see these things happening, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, his disciples, this generation, you guys, will by no means pass away until all of these things take place. And let's see, I believe every single one of his disciples passed away. And there's nobody else that was in that time alive. And many of those prophecies didn't happen. So this isn't a prophecy where we're still waiting for it to happen. This is what's called a false prophecy. So as Muslims, we say Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, never said this. The anonymous author of Mark, who never met Jesus and who was not an eyewitness, just like the other three gospel writers, including Paul too, made it up. Jesus never said this false prophecy, but you believe that this is from your idea that you have of Jesus. And as you see in front of you, this is a false prophecy that I pray to God you will look at and notice, man, this is not the correct religion. This is the satanic religion. This is the devilish religion that speaks lies and has people like Paul saying that it's okay to lie. It's okay to deceive. And on that note, I want to talk a little bit about the prophet Muhammad. Is it okay to lie and deceive in Islam? Let's find out. So Ennis, peace and blessings be upon him, said that the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, every treacherous person will have a banner raised for him over the day of resurrection by which he will be known. This is extremely authentic. Sahih Bukhari and Muslim. All right, let's check it out. We got anything else? 
So the prophet, peace be upon him, said that guarantee for me six deeds and I will guarantee for you paradise. Be truthful when you speak. Okay, we, this is not a religion of lying. Keep your promises when you make them. Fulfill the trust when you're trusted. Guard your chastity. Lower your gaze. And restrain your hands from harming others. This sounds like a really demonic religion to you. Let's try again. Abu Huraira reported, The messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Faith and unbelief cannot be combined together in the heart of man, nor can dishonesty and truthfulness be combined together, nor can treachery and trustworthiness be kind combined together. I think you got a bit of a problem now there, my Hispanic evangelical friend. I think you need to take a look at what you said, because you have humiliated yourself. And, and Jesus Christ was from the Quran was pretty much sinless unto death. There's no evidence that says he was sinless. Just because it doesn't say a specific sin that he committed does not mean that he was sinless. Because if you're going to take that argument, then most of the prophets that are mentioned are all sinless. And in our aqidah, in our creed, our belief, we believe that the prophets are all ma'asum, which means they are incapable of committing or they are protected from committing major sins. But they can commit minor sins, like they can make mistakes. They can choose a, a lesser of two good deeds, right? But they don't commit major sins. The, the Quran was sinless unto death? No, Jesus was sinless during his, t his time yep, alive. he was. He was sinless. He was sinless. Sinless. Mm -hmm. Which means, makes him a perfect sacrifice. He was the la no more lambs, no more goats. He's the, he's the human sacrifice on the cross. And the one thing that the Quran, that Muslims don't believe, is the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, which is, which is, which is what establishes salvation within a Christian religion. Within a Christian religion. And right. then you receive the Holy Ghost. So when I was doing voodoo and I was in Haiti and I was studying Islam and I was studying chakra balancing and crystals and all these things, evil eyes, I had an encounter with Jesus Christ, a supernatural encounter. He came down and filled me with his spirit. I got demons casted out of me. Yeah, you were dealing with voodoo and all of these other enchantments. Yes, you had a spiritual experience, but it was not with Jesus. I swear to you. We got healed from diseases. I burned everything I had. And then I seen miracle signs and wonders constantly. Not okay. just one time, all the time in the streets. I see it all the time. I see people get out of wheelchairs, people heal from back pain, people heal from liver cancer. I was healed from many things just from one time miracle prayer. So, God bless you, man. So, like I said, he is God, bro. Jesus Christ is Lord and he loves you so much. You're going to come and tell me that this personal experience that you have no proof to back it up except for your word is now somehow God. I mean, by that same logic, any person who believes any other religion, that they feel good about it, they can say that Shiva is God, that all of the other beliefs and things that they say are God, are God. It's, bro, come on, use your head a little bit. He wants to have a relationship with you where you can hear his voice. I don't mean to disrespect anybody. I love everybody. But I will say from what I've learned and what I've studied, he is God. You love everybody. So you love the devil? I'll challenge you on that. If someone came and killed your daughter, would you still love them? If someone came and hurt your parents, do you still love them? Yeah, you might forgive them, but do you have to love them? Do you have to love the devil who, according to you, wants you to go to hell? How, how can you love somebody like that? To me, you're insincere. This ain't true. You're just saying something because it makes you feel good. Well, I'm glad you, I'm, you know, I have no, you know, my mom was a Christian. She loved, and where she's in heaven? Um, I don't know. She's in heaven. When, no. You don't know, neither one of us know that. Watch this. I'm gonna, can I show you something? I'm going to show you a text message, just show you a miracle. This is before we came here. Mm -hmm. I seen a chubby, light-skinned Muslim man in the spirit, a little taller than me, big beard. Someone comment, look, look, my friend who's in the car right now praying, he's seen this before we got here. But, but, the, that's you're not me. No, I'm saying, like, it is, because if you see him, he'll come out here. Mm -hmm. You are a little bit taller than him, mm -hmm. you're a little bit chubby, and you have a beard. You know how many people came here to look like me? But what are the chances, though? You know? This this is how these charlatans play their their their. I'm I'm okay. It's 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 quite foolish. They're they're silly games. How many people are at the masjid? They were talking about it's completely packed. There are for Muslims beards. We have beards. That's that's what that's what we do. We do beards. How likely is it that there will be somebody who is probably a little bit chubby, 
once you get older, it just kind of happens, who will have a beard and will be a little bit taller than him. Well, light skin, that's kind of, that, that, that's very subjective because according to me, he's not light skinned, right? But according to darker people than him, he's light skinned. You see what they're doing here? They're playing on words, trying to make something seem like this guy is some prophet. When in reality, this is just that same tarot card baloney. No, I mean, a, I can show you a five or ten that was here earlier. I don't even know their names. <laughs> I know their names. Can I, can I, can but, I, can but, I, can I say a quick prayer for you right now? You can. What's your name? Come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. All right. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray that you bless my brother. You, you show him the truth of life, the, the, the way, Father God, that you... That you just bless him, have angels around him, Lord, by the blood of Jesus. I pray, I pray a good seed is planted today on good soil in his heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you, man. Hey, Mel, I'll find you, brother. Bro, you, I've, in, in, in the I've day seen of, you before in the spirit. In, you look familiar. In the day of judgment, mm -hmm. none of this will account for anything because only Allah chooses who he wills. Based off the crown, the rages of one sin is death. Based off the crown, the wages of one sin is one death. Sin is no, it's not. There's, there's nothing in the Quran. This guy literally is lying just to make Islam seem more palatable and resemble Christianity because he's doing his, his, uh, his uh, voodoo, his voodoo Pauline chameleon magic tricks. Is that? Mm -hmm. no, it's not I'm Wade. Not, no, no, it is Wade. It is Wade. I can assure, I'm not sure. There's dozens of verses of the Quran talking about the Mizan, the scales, and a hadith in the dozens. I mean, you, you, this guy can't be a bigger liar than he is right now. Sure, who you were taught from. Mm -hmm. But if I had the imam here, because he's much more knowledgeable than I did, mm -hmm. he could show you in writing. Mm -hmm. And I, have, I can send you a video of brothers who can explain to you in Christianity mm -hmm. the exact same thing where it says that doesn't work. According to the Mosaic law, you guys believe in Moses? On, yeah. So okay, according to 613 Moses, I know that's in the Quran for sure. The 613 Mosaic. There's no, I, I can't tell you. Where ask, I've read ask, or seen, ask, ask your imam. where is 613 Moses laws? Ask written. him. I, I He'll will. tell you. And once you see that, study the laws. He is playing on this guy's ignorance, guys. This is why you have to be careful. If somebody approaches you and they want to talk to you and you know you don't have the knowledge, you tell them politely, thank you. Go speak to someone else who does have knowledge because he's, he's playing you like a fool, like that little fiddle, man. The devil come down to Georgia playing that fiddle real well and study what they are what is sin sin is transgression that's the actual definition is going against the law but i will never believe because i've studied enough i believe jesus that, that, that jesus died for our sins this guy's trying He's way too hard with you. a supernatural encounter and then you'll see man I love, god bless you man you have such a pure heart you're loving god bless you man all right take care god bless you. all right hey guys so we're leaving the muslim mosque as you guys saw Right, uh, because there's uh, Jewish mosques and Christian mosques and Hindu mosques, right. Deacon Joel actually texted me this, literally. I'm not even capping. Look at the time. He texted me this at 1.35, and right now it's 3 o'clock. I've seen a chubby, light-skinned Muslim in the spirit, a little taller than him. Literally, the man we just interviewed is a little taller than him, chubby, with a beard. That's crazy. The man just got touched. I believe that he's going to get saved because his mother's Christian. She's praying for him. As you guys can see, the car is right there. Deacon Joel's in the in the car interceding for us. The imam didn't want to talk to us. You know, I don't believe it was a conversation for him. I believe it was a conversation for the man. Um, Y'all keep him in prayer. God is good, man. Jesus Christ is the only way. He All right, man. This is uh, this is pretty. I mean, it's so cringe. I <laughs> I might need to go put some visine in my eyes before they start uh, bleeding. He was sinless unto death. Even Muslims believe that. He was born of a virgin. Even Muslims believe that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so was uh, Adam and Eve. Oh, Jesus had a mother, but no father. But guess what? Eve had a father, Adam. She came from his rib. No mother. Well, that's even crazier. And wait, Adam had no mother and no father. So by that logic, he must be God too. He ascended to heaven. He doesn't know his Quran. There's a lot to unpack, brothers and sisters. I want to go back to the beginning because he made some stuff that I didn't get to touch on yet. And I want to do that before we wrap this up. So here we go. By the grace of God, I've, I've learned um, apologetics when it comes, it comes to Islam. Islam is a false religion. Muhammad was a false prophet. It, the, the Islam talks about murder, wars, false prophecies, all that. So let's go to the Bible. Yeah, guys, it's Bible study time. Here we go, y'all. 
You want me to do my Bible voice as well? But of the cities of these people which your Lord, your God, gives you as an inheritance, you shall let nothing that breathes remain alive, but you shall utterly destroy them. The Hittite and the Amorite and the Canaanite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite, just as the Lord your God has commanded you, lest they teach you according to all their abominations which they have done for their gods, and you sin against the Lord your God. So... You say Jesus is part of the Trinity and he is God. This is God of the Old Testament. So you can't say that Jesus didn't exist because then you'd be really screwing up your, your uh, creed real bad. So Jesus commanded everything alive that breathes. You say, well, this is a one-off. Maybe we don't understand what everything alive is. Maybe it just meant the soldiers. Well, what if we go to 1 Samuel? Oh, here we go. This is Saul, right? Lord sent me to anoint your... You king over his people, over Israel, therefore heed the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I will punish Amalek for what he did to Israel, how we ambushed him on the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and do not spare them, but both man and woman, infant and nursing child. What? You, you, did you just say nursing child infants? Ho, ho, ho. Oxen, sheep, camel, and donkey. And I can swear to you that nowhere in Islam is it okay to non-combatants, much less nursing, breastfeeding babies? That is next level cruelty, if you ask me. And then you say, well, old covenant God changed his mind. Ain't the same, God ain't the same anymore. Okay, you got some real big problems if you think God is a changing, shifting God. Some metamorphosis, you know, he was a caterpillar, got in his cocoon, and now he became this butterfly God. Uh, Stockford, I hate even saying this stuff, but this is, this is basically what you're saying. Let's go look at the new commandment. He said to them all too well, reject the commandment of God that you may keep your tradition. This is in Mark 7, 9 through 10. For Moses said, honor your father and mother and... He who curses his father or mother, let him be put to d So Jesus is confirming that if you dishonor your father and mother, you shall be put to Sir, you said that you wanted to get to the truth of the matter, that you care about the truth and Islam is about lies. But I got something for you. Answers. I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! And on that, I want to thank every single person out here Please, guys, if you like this content, make sure to share this with your Christian friends, your Hindu friends, your non-Muslim friends. And please, if you've got any questions, y'all send me an email. My email is linked in my description of my channel. I am more than willing to talk to any one of you people out there who are truly sincere in seeking the truth. Because at the end of the day, God has saved me from the darkness of Christianity, the darkness of disbelief, and sent me to this path of Islam, has guided me, has saved me. And I pray that I can, too, be part of that mission that he sent with his prophets to also guide and save other people. Guys, I love you all. Please lasso that like. Saddle up on the subscribe. And if you can, go check out my website, themuslimcowboy.com. And until next time, salam, y'all. القرآن المجيد بل عجبوا أن جاءهم منذر منهم فقال الكافرون هذا